As we are on the 2021 virtual shift tour for the Taste of the Caribbean, I'm able to sit with these fine gentlemen to have a discussion on many topics, all rooted in reggae, and this is rooted, the discussion. I welcome Kid Rasta from Kid Rasta and the Peacemakers, Rodcliffe Chung from Fresh Start for Youth Services, and Dr. Jason Wilson, author of King Alpha Song in a Strange Land, The Roots and Routes of Canadian Reggae. So as you can see, the collective is very diverse and we're here to represent Canada's multiculturalism. I wanted to ask like a touchy subject because we, we see there's a conversation that's very relevant nowadays where racism is concerned and you know, everyone's perception of racism is different, but experiences help others understand how to battle against racism or reverse racism, as we're coming to learn is another big topic of conversation now. Um, can you, uh, kid, share if you've had any experiences where you know, okay, this is like, this is racism. Like, this is definitely racism and it's unfair. Yeah. I think it was trying to play one of the reggae shows in Toronto and having to go to the island and the police deciding we're closing the island down that day and this reggae festival is not going to go on. And we mm -hmm. went to the island, even though they tried to stop our boat because we ended up taking a side boat. They wouldn't let us on the ferry, so we ended up renting a boat to get across, <laughs> but they've seen us <laughs> and they chased us and stopped us in the middle of the lake. But because we had Rogers with us and a camera rolling, we were allowed to like go back to the other side. So when we got there, they ended up shutting the show down before we got to play. They said that there was a riot starting, but the only people starting the riot is... Where them? You know it. Yeah. So sad to say, but if this is the government we're living under and these are the rules, the rules have to change. Yeah. We're just regular people trying to have a good time. Mm -hmm. and, and the government's saying that they're going to be in control of racism, maybe pass laws. You can't be in control of racism when you're the point of racism. So you can't set a law, you can't make the law to abolish it, you're the reason for it. Like, mm -hmm. we don't have it amongst the people, so don't tell us we do. Mm -hmm. You come over to my house in my backyard, you're not going to see racism. And if you have racism, you better not come in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, and you better not speak of it. You yeah. better hold your tongue. Yeah. So, yeah. to me, Might it's like tongue. racism comes from above, not, not in the normal like, yeah, amongst, and it gets breeded. Amongst, like a lot of yeah. people get manipulated, and you get to believe. You know, yeah, I am more superior than this yeah. race. That's, no, that's taught. Yeah, that's it's the all taught. Yeah. And if you start to believe that, then you've already lost. You've already yeah. yeah. And don't move to a country like Canada because you won't even be able to fit in. Yeah. I think they tried to make Canada an example, see if it would work. If we put everybody in one country, <laughs> like, will it explode or will it last? No, it lasted, <laughs> and we're full of love, and we can make the best decisions. Yeah, and we can all work together. And, and now we, they're like, oh my God, we got, we better take this away. <laughs> like, oh, what did we do? Like we made them all get along. Like what did we do that was so wrong? Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's like they made a big and mistake. Yeah, I think no, Canada no, is like, they removed the song long ago, Kumbaya. Mm. Yeah. And I think Canada's culture and diversity is literally that kumbaya did they take it away year. oh yeah they, you, go read that up <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know yeah they it, well when i say take it away it, it's not anything that's celebrated okay. and, and they removed okay the whole concept of using yeah. kumbaya my friend yeah as a way to celebrate mm. one another and wow. that's really that that is like the core essence of I feel what reggae music does. It's a camp song. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's a camp it's song, together. and and when you love like lovers of reggae, it's it's a togetherness, it's yeah. a oneness. Yes. And that's what's most important in this world, that yeah. oneness. And yeah. so when you say kumbaya, my friend, yeah, it's like I'm with you yeah. regardless. Yeah. Like I'm with you with. We're, we're with each other regardless. Yeah, yeah. And then that's also scary because there's strength in numbers. And the minute we hold hands. Yeah, they don't like it. Yes. Right. Sure don't. Yeah, yes. They de <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure definitely don't. something. Yep. Um, what, about, what about you, Jason? I, like, uh, I've, heard, I've heard a couple. Know. Yeah, there's, uh, I always call this my uh, black by association stories. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, I usually tell it to my first year students. Shout out to them if they're watching. Mm -hmm. um, at Guelph University, which is a, usually a largely uh, 
quite rural, lovely, wonderful kids. Um, mm -hmm. But they don't know the inner city experience of a Toronto and that kind of thing. So my, my, so my telling usually is quite dramatic. And, I, you know, I get them on their, the edge of their seats. You know, I've been held at gunpoint by a police officer. I've been thrown up against a fence. I've been thrown over a, um, a cruiser and having to empty my pockets. I've been humiliated. Um, all of that has happened to me because I was hanging out with my black friends mm. or having black people in my band. Uh, Rasta drummer I used to work with, all we did was fist pump each other at the end of the night. And I, dro I dropped him off. I was with my girlfriend at the time. So he jumps out of the car, fist pump, and this is on Eglinton. Two seconds later, me on the back of the car, the whole deal. What are you with the black guy for? What did you do? What did you buy? What did you all this kind of stuff? And I'm like, I work with that gentleman. He's a mm -hmm. brother to me. He's oh, this is a really him. bad neighborhood, you know, yeah. like you don't say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, and then I end this story, my my telling of this story <laughs> with the students is like, imagine what it was like for the black guy. That's me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and I can't, I mean, I have an idea because I've witnessed it firsthand as I'm sure we all have over yeah. many years, but I get far enough away from that road, I'm back to whitey, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's only when you're in that thing that you see shards through shards of the broken glass that you can see yeah. what it's like. Mm -hmm. And it's terrifying and it's terrible. Yeah. Do I think we've improved? I'd like to hope we have. I don't know if we all agree if we have or not. Yeah. Um, but I think better. what you said, uh, kid, was like, it's not coming from below, it's yeah. coming from above. Yeah. Um, and I think that's yeah. where it starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the police yeah. officer in that that's instant. That's right. In that instant. The man who I should have the better judgment is the one Instantly who, went yes. to this, this, yes. this is a drug deal, this Definitely. is whatever it is. Definitely. Um, mm -hmm. And it was the yeah. furthest thing from that, so. Sure. Mm -hmm. You've been on both sides of the yeah. spectrum. <laughs> You've well. been on both sides of the spectrum, so yeah. I know you can speak to it from, from multiple... Oh, I, I could give you a thousand and one yeah. stories. Um, but what I can say is, with racism, people have got to understand that racism comes from people. And, you know, if you look at back in the 1960s, and let's talk about Rosa Parks. Yeah. I mean, I'm born in early 70s. Mm -hmm. So there's still people around that mm -hmm. still had those beliefs. Oh, yeah. So when you're talking about, you know, racism and who's in control and everything else, um, the one thing I can say is the more that we talk and communicate and just respect people and understand that mm -hmm. we're not computers. Yeah. You know, we, we have to make, you know, decisions that we would make for our own family when dealing with a stranger. Sure. Because mm -hmm. if you learn to treat people the way that you want to be treated, as well as how you treat your own family members, that's gonna first be your first you know, bridge to, to, to get over. But I can tell you with my experiences, when I've had, um, you know, I'm gonna say some negative encounters. Um, my last name is Chung, I'm black. You can imagine how the story goes when mm -hmm. I, you know, I've had my interactions and stuff. But what I can say is for me, just leaving you know that interaction i've got to let that person know that number one it's not okay because you found out that i'm okay the next time you deal with someone else just give them their dignity yeah. you treat them with respect if they've done something wrong they've done something wrong but yeah. in the instance where you found out there was nothing wrong explain yourself apologize a lot of mm. times you know an apology can go so far yeah. racism will yeah. it go away it, it's here it's just for the majority not to accept it. And okay. when they see it, instead of turning a blind eye, challenge it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, true. the, the only way that, that it could yeah. um, really have any effect to even do anything when it comes to that. You've traveled across Canada. Yeah. You've traveled across Canada, Jason. Have you traveled across Canada? I, I've traveled, I'm going to say, to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> I've traveled, like, not straight across Canada. What would you... Let's separate Canada, not Quebec from okay. the rest, but let's separate the East and West. Traveling across Canada, where 
would you say you see racism more prevalent? Wow. Is it in yeah. the West Coast? We're going to throw city? someone under the bus. I don't mind being the driver. I just don't. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. I th so bizarrely, on our first tour across Canada, Westwise, everyone said, wait to get to Vancouver, wait to get to BC, I love it. And I, I couldn't wait, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, then I stopped in Saskatchewan uh, and fell in love with the people and eventually married a girl from Saskatoon. That's yeah. and, and I just, I, so it was so resonated with these, you know, farmers and, and, and small towns and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, I just loved it. And unfortunately for poor Vancouver and BC, <laughs> when I got there, um, that's when our, our black members experienced the most racism. Yeah. That's where we actually had the N-word being yelled at us out of cars, passing cars. And I'm like, where am I? This yeah. is what? Yeah. Like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Now, I, I like to think mm -hmm. I've had great experiences in BC since. There's, I've played many festivals. I've played many cities in, in British Columbia. So forgive me, but that, that, that was just that initial sort of, mm -hmm. that stuck with me. I mean, I was 24 at the time. So it's, yeah. it's one of those like, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's still fresh. It, it stung and, it, and it, it stuck with me. Less so, I, 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 you know, I was much older when I started traveling east. Mm -hmm. um, they, and when you been, travel east, all you got to do is get screeched in. Yeah. And yeah, you're good. That's funny. <laughs> I've, so I've had, and uh, you know, the way more, I would hope for you two, kid, yeah. that way more happier experiences. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. But, but that, that first stinging, definitely. biting, total racist one was out that, out that way. Yeah. What about, what about you and your travels across Canada? Across Canada? Yeah, okay. would you say West Coast <laughs> versus East well, Coast? Well, it's funny because right? you could go north, but if you go too north, it's okay. If you, you know, if you're stuck in the middle, then yeah. it gets kind of weird. Right. <laughs> it just, it depends on where you're driving in Canada. Mm -hmm. But I think it, like it's what he said, it's up to the individuals because sometimes you go back to the same town. Yeah, that's right. And it's right. a total opposite. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you had a really bad problem the first time you showed up, but then you never met that same guy who started that big problem for you. So then ah. it ended up that you're just like, oh, it wasn't the whole town, it was one guy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you're that right. kind of ruined right. it. Yeah. So there's yeah, a lot of that. One bad but apple one spoils bad. the bunch. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's how it goes. And when you allow the bad apple to be in charge, well, then you're in trouble. Yeah. Like, we got to start to say, okay, you know what? This apple's bad. Get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. We got rights mm -hmm. to do that. See, yeah. leaders forget that, that, that uh, they're anointed, right? They think that they're anointed by God. <laughs> right. Yeah, but they're not. <laughs> we put them into power. Yeah. And, and now it looks like God has to come just to take their power back away. Because that's yeah. the only thing to take their power away from them now. But, yeah, hopefully. I love his militancy. Yeah. I so love it. Well, yeah. <laughs> talk about money. And then mm. I, it's one of those things that I really don't like to talk about. Yeah. Because I know we all don't do what we're doing because of money. Yeah. Um, we do what we're doing because we love what we're doing. And we know when we do the right thing, yes. we get blessed. True. And it's every step we take doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, I have yeah. to say, walk right, you'll shine bright, and you'll be yeah. blessed. Yeah. You'll constantly be blessed. And what, what would you say is affecting the, the Canada's economic growth when it comes to reggae music? Because we see artists in Jamaica, we see artists in the States, see UB40, and they have amazing careers, massive yeah. residual income, yeah. um, a strong fan base. So, like, I'm sure UB40 does not have to promote their next tour. Yeah. They just got to send out an email blast and say, we'll be here next. Yeah. Um, it's the same right. as when, when any major artist tours here in Canada, you don't even know they're coming <coughs> if you're a general public True. because you're not part of that, yeah. that list then that list speaks to business. What do you think we've done incorrectly? Well, uh, if we've done anything incorrectly, let me add that, yeah, yeah. To, to adding value to, to the economy here. We're regular Working in the in industry, I think it's two, two sides of two problems. So it's the artist, the regular artist himself, UB40 shows up on time. When, they're, mm. when the show starts the at nine, chapter. they're on stage at a quarter to nine and they're ready to go behind yeah. stage. You know what I mean? Nine o'clock, yeah. they're walking out there, the show starts. Yeah. You're, right. you're in Canada. You're in a different country now. You've got to follow the promoter's rules. Yeah. So you've got to respect the promoter. The guy who's putting all the time to make sure that you get from your country to this country. 
to perform on stage, well, you perform from 10 to 11. That's your time. Because yeah. at 11 o'clock, there's no more sound. We right. got laws. There's different laws here than in the next country. So you have to respect the laws of the country you're going to play in. Mm. And then after, you got to show up on stage and be there on time. Right. And when you're not, you scare promoters. Because promoters are dropping a lot of money into well, having shows. Not just promoters, yeah. though, kid. Because what you'll have is... Um, Artists. I mean, uh, uh, young, fans. Young the fans that, that are going to say, you know what? I'd like to see... I'm going to pick someone. Sugar Minot. Yeah. Mm. You know, when he was here in the 80s or whatever. I want to go see Sugar Minot. Yeah. And Sugar Minot doesn't show up. Or like you say, he's yeah. on at 3 in the morning. Yeah. Well, if you're 17... You can't see him. And you have to get back to Scarborough. You you, you miss. You, you're not yeah. going to see Sugar Minot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that was part of the problem for a long time. Oh, yeah. Where... To, uh, like you say, yeah. aligning the sort of the, what we do here yeah. <laughs> with yeah. Uh, with getting everybody to agree on the same page. And yeah. just say, it's not a disrespect thing towards you. We know you want to play at midnight. Yeah, midnight doesn't even exist here. Yeah, yeah, like midnight, so, yeah. it's done. Everybody's closed. Right. Like you know what I mean? It's like and that is on the artist. Up. I would say on the other side of that, which yeah. I imagine you're getting to, is <laughs> is uh, the fact that we've undervalued reggae for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. 100%. The, the, ma the majors. Mm -hmm didn't know what to do with us yeah. you know they signed messenger they signed the satellites yeah. and then well we After did it just yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. there it is we tried. Like, yeah, and, and, and we tried. i i mean yes. to, a, to a certain extent good for them for doing that at yes. least mm -hmm. um, but then it just sort of fell off um yeah the yeah. wheels sort of fell off there yeah. and um that's a shame <laughs> that that is part and i think you alluded to yeah. it earlier Fair carrie right. The size of the Canadian reggae, or sorry, Canadian record industry and, yeah. isn't very big anyway, period. Right. Yeah. And right. yet, our impact as Canadian musicians, full stop, um, has been phenomenal. Yeah. But if you check Leonard Cohen and Joni Mitchell and mm -hmm. ever, they all left. Yes. Yeah. Celine Dion. They all left. <laughs> and I think yeah. that's what, that's really what we, we need to get um, really right. established is our roots and our route. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. <laughs> in, in Canadian reggae, it's like we are not firmly planted and standing up for this is this is our country. We're going to make it from here, regardless what it takes. That uh, you continue, both you and Jason, continue to stand and wave the flag, regardless of what type of troubles. Um, the hills, valleys, potholes, speed bumps come in your way. And there has to be more artists willing to do that versus running away to make the big buck and then be controlled oh, yeah. by that narrative. Like, both of you are speaking your own narrative. Nobody controls the conversation. No record deal. Yeah. 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 Which means no record deal, but yeah, that doesn't. No record deal. But the, yeah. does that not mean no? Your big, job your big nine to five reggae artist for my own record. Yeah. Yep, yep. I don't and, mind and that, that at all. And that yeah. leads to you being able to be the decision maker totally. and totally. and control yeah. ultimately your movement. And it's blessed that I can actually do that. Yeah. 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 It's a big thing. Yep. And uh, I can I can speak to the artists that, and I'm going to call them artists because when I came to Fresh Start for youth services group home, they all, they, every young man that was making music had their own persona. Mm -hmm. And they, they were already creating their movements in their head. Where am I gonna go next with mm -hmm. this? You know, what, what am I going to gain outside of this experience as a greater value? Yeah. And when I'm delivering it to someone else, how are they gonna receive it and absorb it? and feel that value, that exchange of, of energy, leading these, the young men that you've led into the understanding of music and how it, it's helped them personally heal, would you say that what they're building now is also going to help um, the overall landscape of Canada's music scene? Um, not all of them are, they, they're very diverse hip hop artists or something like reggae. They're, they're diverse. They're not stuck in one laneway. And I think that's another thing that we've got to understand when it comes to reggae as a genre in Canada, the influence of other genres melt into that and into this melting pot where we live in. What would you you'd say for them is going to become a value, the meaning money value? 
is it worth it for them now to pursue music as a career? Well, I mean, the advantage that the kids have coming through our program is number one, we're pushing them. Mm -hmm. We already, they already have a platform within us. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's paid for. All they have to do is be creative. Yeah. Now, if you apply those same principles to Can as a whole, if you had somebody like myself pushing for them and pulling it, mm -hmm. then you have a bigger platform just to be on. Mm -hmm. So I'm very realistic with these kids as far as, you know what, we do do two things. Number one, we focus on trying to find something that you're good at besides music as well. Right. Okay? Yep. So right. You, and then you try to keep them parallel. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't even push, you know, to say, for every kid, you need to graduate high school, college, university, because some kids may never ever achieve that. And to already set their mind up yeah. as a failure because they didn't achieve that, mm, I've yeah. already set them back. True. Because yeah. we as people just look at the bigger picture to say that everyone should do this, this, and this. And we've been doing that for a hundred years. My mindset has changed so much more now. It's like, I want to find out what you're good at. Mm -hmm. what you may love to do it may be mm -hmm. just sewing and knitting and you know fixing a car or you know fixing a wall but you still love music okay. so let's do them both now <laughs> what we do as far as music goes i teach them about so can i teach them about you know what branding yourself you know do you want to make money off of this well then this might not be the right time to throw your music out there because guess what this person's just released all these albums and now your music is just gonna be knocked over here. Yeah. Let's just wait till just before summer because that sounds like a summer song. So then now they're getting a lot smarter and how they <laughs> release their own music yeah. and yeah. how they do things. Yeah. But marketing again, marketing their own value. Here it yeah. is, the marketing piece. If you look at Canada as a whole, who's really pushing reggae music? Who's really looking at reggae music as a huge platform? Mm -hmm. What Canadians tend to do is, we like you as a star. Mm -hmm. So, you, you've come from England, you've come from Jamaica, you're the big thing over there. Well, we need you here. Yeah. The ready-made star. I want you yeah. here now. But guess what? I was actually born here and I went to England. I went to Jamaica to become a hit for you to now recognize me. Yeah. So, I still believe that when it comes to the music industry, and I've yet to see the Juno Awards focus primarily on reggae because reggae has so many different categories. It's, yeah. it's unfair. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Totally. You have reggae hip hop, you have reggae R&B, you can just have classic reggae, classic yeah. dance yeah. hall. That's a show of its own. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think right? it's oh, a, yeah. a shame. Definitely. And I'm about the first to say it, even involved with chairing the reggae category that's been a constant yeah. conversation and battle with the organization of Karis for them to really understand that the reggae recording of the year category should really only take submissions from EPs or albums there needs to be a different category for reggae, for artists who are doing reggae, artists that are doing dancehall, artists that are yep. doing even reviving ska that have singles. But to really take your album, <laughs> SOS, yeah. Songs of Salvation, to take that album now after the amount of years, this is seven years in the, in the works, yep. and to put that up against one single song, and that one single song could win because that artist is connected in a behind the scenes way <coughs> it really validates yeah. there's a there there is a heavy lack of fairness yeah and That's balance i'm <laughs> laughing over here yeah because <laughs> this will be the first time ever this year that i'm putting in a single into the yeah, rain. Yeah. Yeah. Every, other time, every other time, every other time, been an album. It's all everybody. But, <laughs> but you realize you didn't have to do it anymore. Uh, well, that uh, it, partly yes, yeah. and partly COVID yeah, yeah. and all of that. Yeah, like, yeah I just yeah. didn't have to. Yeah. I mean, but that's funny. That's, that's funny. <laughs> that, that we're gonna <laughs> yeah. we're gonna also see. Yeah. Like this is this is good to yeah. to hear you say too, Jason, because you've got the number one song yeah. in Canada. It's like the charts; they're validated. The people who call vote. Yeah. Um, WhatsApp, email, when the song came out, their 
the response that I received on the show was like, oh, and I'm like, yo, this is reggae. <laughs> this is the real, real roots rock I reggae. Hear it. I didn't hear it yet. I'm <laughs> oh my gosh, the song is it's absolutely amazing, and it it still took its time to climb the charts. Yeah, but it moved faster than other songs mm -hmm. moved up the charts because of the value of authenticity yeah. that it came with. You're talking about a Jamaican musician mm -hmm. and a Canadian Scottish musician who have come together and they delivered mm -hmm. what is reggae, what, what we know in here in Canada be reggae. But you see, the minute there was a submission in the past that was an album that spoke to cultural diversity it it got moved to the side that's what i saw yeah it would get moved to the side because that's too heavy a conversation we can't control that and it, well, like and we're I, not in control of that conversation. and i think that and, and rod actually sort of touched on this the whole if you're a star in england or you're a star in jamaica we're going to pay off but we don't do that for we don't value yeah. our the own. same and yeah. it, and the reason you got UB40, Aswad, Steel Pulse, all these mm -hmm. cr crazy, amazing British reggae bands that that had an international success still, is that they did. Yeah. Little people like you know your working yeah. class in Birmingham said, "I'll put five pounds. I'm going to go see UB40 or yeah. in, in yeah. London." They see the value go, go in even Aswad. going in the concert. Yeah. Like yeah. you, you, I've done it. Put mm -hmm. together a roster of Canadian artists. We're in a nice venue, great sound. Awesome performances, no support yeah. from the community. Yeah. Yeah. No support from the community because it's like what I've seen is if you don't have your hands in it, yeah. you know, it's, I don't want to be a part of it because the arm. Yeah. You know, that's not, I don't control that or they don't control it. It's all a matter of control. Yeah. And I think really been Canada's greatest downfall is that People who have a control to do more don't get the support to do it. Yeah. And then those who are behind the scenes that are controlling aren't willing to edify the Lone Ranger. Oh, they'll go so far. Yeah. They'll sign the satellites or they'll sign Messenger. Yeah, they'll go so it. far. It's like they, they're willing to continue breadcrumbing, throw a bone. Breadcrumbing, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very much breadcrumbing. Yeah. And it's unfair. Like, uh, I can yeah. really say what I've seen and experience is completely unfair and and I, I like I totally hope from this conversation and the seed planting and us rooting in this discussion that all viewers that are going to take this in and watch this can say to themselves I love reggae mm -hmm. and I'm willing to go to a concert and pay to see Jason Wilson to see Kid Rasta to see to see whomever Juno Award winner is next, yeah. but edification, celebration, mm -hmm. like of one another, is is the big, really the key to it. It's like yeah. if you're 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 the artist that has got the new album out, then every other artist should be willing to grab one of your pedestal yeah. legs and raise yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what we miss here. When you True. when you're in Jamaica and an artist is coming out for a performance, it yeah. is packed, yeah. and you're seeing all these artists celebrating yeah. each other. There's yeah, no true. jealousy, true. no animosity, yeah. no no competition. Who plays first, who plays it's second. almost like, yeah. yo, Jason, you got the new yeah. song, you're number one. Yeah. So a big yard tune, make we collaborate now. And the collab, that's that's the reaching here. out is it's that's yes. how you the collaboration yeah. is where where it's at. True. I think of uh, the English beat, yeah. you know, the beat. Yeah, they met at a UB40 show. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and willing to and, and okay. vibed yeah. off of that, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and went on to have a great career too. Yeah. So. Hmm. Well, Music. I really hate to say it, but we're running out of time now. And then this discussion has enlightened me for what I could do more. Mm -hmm. Like, what role could I play to do more? And because it's never, it's sure. never enough. No matter what we think or say, or even exhaustion makes us believe. It's never enough to go to a maximum length when you're a co-creator. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we we all share equally here is that we've all co-created not only where reggae music is concerned, but yeah. fellowship in the community yeah. mm -hmm. and wanting to give back yeah. basically to community members and bring them a value which comes from love, mm -hmm. like love. And this, this reggae music has always represented love, peace and unity. And I can say that each of us do represent one of those three words True. in massive ways. Like yeah. uh, That's coming to a close. We're in Toronto, as we said, it's the Taste of the Caribbean's virtual shift tour. I'm Carrie Mullings, and I do hope that you enjoy joining us. Kid Rasta, new Love albums it. out, <laughs> SOS, Songs of Salvation, Rod Cliff Chung, Fresh Start for Youth Services, please get linked up with Fresh Start. Anything that you would like to know, you've just got to look up Rod Cliff Chung and be able to help him as he helps others. And Jason Wilson, get it, get it, get it on Amazon. The book is out there. King Alpha Song in a Strange Land, The Roots and Routes of Canadian Reggae. And from the East Coast to the West Coast, we continue the virtual shift tour. Next season, it's off to Montreal and continue to follow every season as we move forward collectively and create this fraternity of great people in the reggae diaspora. Well, I'm tired. We made a lot of movements together here in Toronto. I hope you do join us for our next stop in Montreal. I'm Kerry Mullings. I've had a great time being your host. And look out for what's happening. More seasons, more music, more food, and more fellowship. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for raising the vibration and keeping us all together on the 2021 Taste of the Caribbean Virtual Shift Tour. Take care, everyone. more genocide that's our message and we give thanks for you joining us on behalf of the taste of the caribbean's board of directors staff and volunteers we stand in solidarity with our indigenous family across the land we look forward for you joining us in the next episode as we move on to montreal and remember our children are our future Nurture them and nourish them and move them to greater levels. We can all do it together. United we stand.